knowledge. Part of the knowledge series from uh, Focus, the Forum of Critical Utility Services. We have uh, Mr. Balaji, a specialist in automated multi-level mechanical parking solution who will be supported by none other than architect Vivek Bhole, who will in fact start the webinar with a presentation as part of his keynote address to put things in perspective. Uh, Mr. Balaji will take it on from there and give us an insight into the varied solutions that are available targeting varied challenges uh, that we face. We will provide you an opportunity to ask your questions. Uh, we have uh, none other than our president uh, of Focus and uh, Doyen of the Construction Industry, Mr. Vasudevan Suresh, who will moderate the Q&A session. Do feel free to post your uh, questions in the Q&A box. Uh, uh, do not use the chat box. I request you to post your questions in the Q&A section. And uh, uh, this will be easy for us to address all your queries. There's just one um, uh, request that I have. Um, you know, all your questions pertaining to service maintenance and such related matters uh, can also be posted. However, these questions will be taken up post the webinar and uh, we will have our experts address your questions appropriately post the session, not during the session because this session is predominantly for, uh, you know, to understand the different uh, solutions that are uh, available. Uh, before I uh, invite our, uh, you know, keynote speaker, architect uh, Vivek Bhole, uh, Mamata, could we have the focus video, please? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are delighted to present to you the Forum of Critical Utility Services, the acronym of which is FOCUS. Much as the acronym suggests, the role of the Forum of Critical Utility Services is to bring in focus all that concerns the construction industry. This is not just for India, but for a coordinated construction industry world over. For those of you who may not be aware, this initiative is to prepare and present a platform where all the verticals of the critical utility services of the construction industry forge into one formidable group that will strive in building unity, aid in diffusing misconceptions and present itself as a platform for discussions amongst these bodies of professionals. This initiative was born on the 26th of October 2020 when the world was almost silent from the after effects of the pandemic. We say silent because the cry for help and riddance from the clutches of the pandemic went deafening. There simply was no place that was safe anywhere in the world. None of the formidable structures that man had erected was safe for protection from the pandemic. It was during these times that we decided on creating a platform so as to be able to present improved and concerted methodologies of developing projects that shall not just be sustainable or resilient, but also deliver safe environment and a valuable business opportunity to the promoters not just for some time but for long long time to come times when another generation will inherit the good work that we do today our efforts begin with drawing the strength from the fields of architecture electrical plumbing hvac safety fire security illumination vertical transportation, IBM is an IT, solid waste management, and last but not the least, facility management. Bring them together and forge them into one strong wheel of change 
to deliver structures that stand in harmony with Mother Nature on planet Earth. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is our mission. Only when we come together and share our ideas and aspirations will we find the stumbling blocks. It is here then that when we are together and focus towards one goal, we will jointly be able to understand and address our challenges as one formidable force. Not just a force in India, but for a global movement that will find solutions, opportunities and the means to address productivity, safety, quality, developing skills, training, evolving standards and ensuring their implementation thereby becoming centers of excellence and setting benchmarks for generations to pursue and improve. And this is our vision. We have embarked upon reaching out to various verticals of the critical utility services. We will thereafter jointly present our cause to the government and policy makers. We will present our vision to the builders. And we are confident that we will break the shackles of inequality, indifference, ignorance and mistrust and build a world that is one with nature. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not here to conjure a forum, but we are here to establish a body that shall have trust, integrity and honesty for its foundation and stand on the pillars of knowledge, commitment, enthusiasm and foresight of its people. Our invitation to you is open. Come and become a part of FOCUS. It is your contribution and support to FOCUS that will make a difference to the new India that is being created. Let's join and make this the Bharat that we wear. Shining prosperous, bright and a true world leader. Let's now focus. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was a short video explaining what the forum is all about. Those of you who are interested, we would encourage you to log on to www.ourfocus.co and uh, do become a member. Uh, you can become an individual member for uh, as little as 2,500 rupees plus uh, GST. So now uh, moving on. Um, before we hear from architect Vivek Bole, I take the honor of introducing the person who, by the way, needs no introduction. Uh, Vivek Bole is a very dear friend to me, a very smart, young, successful architect, a master planner and a town designer with over 24 years of experience. He graduated from the JJ College of Architecture, Mumbai. He started out on his own with the formation of his uh, firm, neo-modern architect and is today the chairman of Vivek Bhole Architects Private Limited. In his 24 years of award-winning industry experience, both nationally and internationally, he has designed and delivered some landmark projects, such as the 6,700 acres township with 140 acres mini secretariat at Bhilwada a 14,000 apartments township in Mumbai as part of the redevelopment of the BD, uh, BBD, BDD Chawl at Worli, the largest redevelopment project in Mumbai till date. I don't know, it could probably be the largest in India as well. And one Avigna Park, a super luxury apartment in the south of Mumbai, luxury resort at Barcelona, Spain, and so on and so forth. We can keep going endlessly. Architect Vivek has won over 50 national and international awards in several categories for his projects, and that's not surprising. With over 450 completed projects and some 500 ongoing projects across the globe, spanning hospitals, 
educational institutions, mega townships, stadia, cultural centers, mixed use development projects, uh, transportation and hospitality projects. Has today made architect Vivek Bhole one of the most sought after architects in the country. The reason for choosing architect Vivek Bhole as a keynote presenter for the sixth knowledge series of focus on the topic of limitless innovation in limited spaces, uh, especially for automated multi-level mechanical parking, is because he, will, he has under his belt over 50 projects involving conception, design, and delivery of multi-level mechanical parking solutions. So who else could I go to? I invite architect Vivek Bhole to put things in perspective for the webinar this afternoon. Over to you, Vivek. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi, for your kind words. Uh, may I share the screen, please? Yes, sir, you can. So it is a stereotype. Uh, when we say how to choose, what to choose, which to choose, uh, it's a stereotype in everybody's mind that if given choice, nobody would prefer mechanical parking, automated parking, or conventional parking. See, who wants artificial light over a natural light? Who wants artificial ventilation over a good natural ventilation? But you can ask the importance of a pacemaker to a patient whose life depends on that one machine. You know, there are projects where multi-level park, car parking, automated car parking are inevitable. And that is where the thought process starts, how to design and how to incorporate. And over a period, the technology has evolved. There are multiple options available. Uh, Balaji is going to tell us about a lot of those available options today. So I'm not going to cover those. So I'm going to tell you exactly how the architect thinks while designing. And what are those parameters he has to consider to select the proper uh, combination uh, of available options? Uh, there is no comparison between conventional uh, MLCPs and automated car parking systems. Uh, it is quite evident that footprint, uh, it is less than half. When it comes to height, you get a saving of almost like 40% and volumetrically it is almost like one third. So you can save a lot of your space comparing to uh, this multi-level car park, conventional multi-level car park. So how you select parking systems? So the basic uh, requirement of parking specifications, the proportion of SUVs and sedans, how many number of SUVs uh, you want in total number of car parks. You want dependent or non-dependent are uh, uh, desirable. Parking sizes in most of the cities, uh, the parking sizes are divided into big car parking and the smaller car parking as per the regulations. Then available space and the required numbers. So the whole story starts from here. I've got car parking space for only three parkings. So the footprint available is only for three parking. And now I want to uh, provide almost like 70 plus car parking on that footprint. Or I want a volume available for only uh, eight car parking and how I accommodate 16 or 24 into that. So the selection criteria will mostly depend upon what is available and what is desired. User profile is very important. Like, uh, you, there are few car parking systems where you need educated people to operate. There are few car parkings that are so, so simple to operate and you don't require uh, even a basic civic, civic sense uh, for the users. So user profile is very important. Then if I want to go below the ground level, so the soil substrata is very important and how much depth I can go. So that depends how, how much volume I can carve out from the subsoil. Then the parking use and the retrieval time for how much period the parking is going to be used for a single car. Uh, if it is a residential building, the parking will be used by only one car. It is de dedicated to that one car. But if it is a mall, then in the 
day time in uh, that operational 10 hours at least 8 to 10 cars will use that parking space so the selection criteria depends on that as well then the availability of entry exits and maneuvering so depending upon the site conditions the complexity of the site uh, you have got number of different entries you may have a driveway in front of the parking system you may not have that driveway sometimes so depending upon the uh, situation you have to select the parking system the structural grid of the building above uh, i have got number of cases where i have got high rise tower on top of the parking system so i'm going to show you a few sample cases where i got a 45 story tower on top of the parking towers so the parking the, the column grid which is coming from the top you cannot compromise that so you have to design your parking system within what is going to be available so if you design the parking along with your uh, layout building layout you can integrate it in such a way that you come up with an intelligent solution where the columns are not getting floated and still you are getting number of uh, more number of car parkings the bylaws and regulations they uh, act uh, there are the stringent uh, constraints when we select the uh, system like in mumbai you have got a restriction of 30 meters for any parking structure but when it comes to uh, a tower parking structure they allow up to 70 meters so the different bylaws they can uh, they can actually decide your selection and the most important is the cost implications so uh, my experience is your mechanical parking or automated parking can range from uh, 1.7 lakh rupees to 10 lakh rupees depending upon the system and uh, the situation so all these are the selection criteria uh, we are going to learn in detail from balaji in his presentation so i'm going to talk from only architect's perspective uh, these are the different parking sizes we know that uh, the suv it requires uh, around let's say seven feet. Uh, the uh, sedan requires much lesser than that. Now, uh, this is the dilemma I always come in. Uh, whenever I uh, tell my client that I'm going to provide a car parking tower with 60 car parks, some parking system comes in picture, they say, okay, we'll provide 70. Somebody says, we'll provide 74. So they are not going, they are not doing some uh, magic there. They're just reducing the height of that uh, hide between those two pallets. So somehow there is some standardization. We'll have to consider that SUV with carrier on top may require even more space. So, but this is the basic uh, spacing which is required. And the bigger pallet of eight feet width, smaller pallet of seven feet width, that is what is desired. Uh, I'm moving on to this uh, cases, the sample cases, like this is my own office building. Uh, whole parking is in two basements. I've got double car parkers, very basic system where you have got dependent double car parking system. I've got 30 car parks multiplied by two, so becomes 60. And the whole building has got these double car parkers. So we designed this building some 12 years back and working very well. Uh, I'm not going to show you the plan because it is very basic. Uh, the first mall which we did now these are the shopping centers in mumbai we call them malls the definition of a mall is much much broader but then these are very prime properties in mumbai where we call them malls but they are in a very crowded area fsi is too much and the ground rate ground first floor second floor the price the real estate price is so high the only option for parking is basement then in the given volume in the basement depth of 10 meters, how many more number of car parks you can use. So we have provided just nothing but simple three by three matrix puzzle parking. But this is what we did in 2002, 2003. And then followed by many of my small projects. This is Moksh Plaza. Those who live in Mumbai, they will know these places. They are very prime properties and typical three by three matrix we used in most of these places. This is in Udaipur, a mall on top of it, there is a uh, hotel, the, the Radisson Green, and then again, uh, three by three puzzle type parking, very simple, neat, clean uh, matrix, everybody knows, and uh, Balaji is going to tell us more about the uh, system. So I'm not again showing you the plans of this. I'm moving to the complex, more complex ones. This is the one, uh, 45 story tower, already at the finishing stage, Rustamji Samut, 
at Borivali, a uh, very prime location in the western suburbs of Mumbai. And you can see how the system is working. I have got a tower on top of a vertical uh, tower parking. So I've got this base, six different bays, and then I've got a turntable at the ground level, and then on the upper level, we have got those parking going up to 70 meters, and then on top of it, a typical floor starts, and the residential building is on top of this uh, mechanical parking. So why we selected this? So if you see the, park, the, the plot, the footprint of the plot is so small that and the FSI, see most of the time, as I said, given choice, people will not use parking unless it is compulsory, it is must. And why it is compulsory? Because of two major reasons. People don't want to uh, use the uh, prime pro uh, preferred uh, property space for parking, that is one. And then the FSI is now increasing day by day. So when the FSI, average FSI in Mumbai is now going almost above four, in such cases, the number of parkings are more. And to add to our uh, agony, the government increased the uh, parking requirement by twice in 2018. So now the parking area, in many of the cases, the area of the parking is as big as the floor plate, the usable floor plate above. The footprint of the total building and the parking footprint is same. So I have seen that uh, cases where uh, 700 square feet of flat area has got parking, two parkings. So that is equivalent to again 700 square feet. This is something which uh, is not really good for our future. We know that there will be uh, last mile connectivity eventually and the number of uh, parkings required will be much lesser. But this is the need of today. And the only solution is multi-level car parking, the automated parking. And this is how it becomes compulsory, this becomes uh, inevitable. We'll have to use those ki kind of parking. Now, when we leave the open space in the plot, the building footprint is the only thing which is available for parking. And the requirement of parking is so high that uh, automated parking is the only solution. So this is a residential building. This is one more residential building at very prime property at Bandra. Now, because we have got a height restriction uh, after the suburban area, so right from uh, Andheri, if you people know about Mumbai. So from Andheri uh, till uh, Mahim, we have got height restriction because of the civil aviation. So the FSI is the same, but the uh, height is restricted to 70 meters or even lesser than that if in few places. So I had to go in the basement. I, I use uh, uh, automated parking in the basement. So the uh, pallet goes down and you have a pallet parking in the basement in three rows. This is a very critical case again. Here the height restriction is even lesser. And this is in Purega. And uh, here I had to uh, provide 170 car parks. Uh, this is the mandatory requirement. And then, uh, see, I'm, I'm not showing you all the good layouts I have because all the big layouts, good layouts, uh, they have got conventional multi-level car parking. These are the critical layouts. So in the critical layout where I have got the restrictions, constraints, uh, regulations, then see the kind of uh, uh, mix I have used. So I have got uh, double car parkers. I have got puzzle type car parking on the periphery. And then I've got uh, parking towers, the stack parking on the right hand side, there are those two towers. And this whole combination gives me 170 odd cars. And uh, again, this is a very prime property. Uh, Shapurji is my client here, a very premium property. Again, a height restriction. This is in uh, between Santa Cruz and Khar below the runway. So the funnel, exactly below the funnel, the property is there. Now, because of the restriction, and I wanted 50 number of car parks, and the plot shape is L shape. And it's a tiny plot. It's hardly 500 square meter of a plot. Now, believe me, this kind of property, the value is so much that if you develop almost like a lakh square feet in those B plus cities, the value is similar to this 500 square meter property. So uh, with this L shape plot, uh, uh, once you design the uh, residential building on top of it, without compromising onto your plan, 
then I had to use this combination. So I had this shuttle parking system in the basement. The only option you have to go below the ground and you see the section on the right hand side. So you have got multiple, multiple levels of parking and the shuttle moving inside the two aisles. And uh, then we have got uh, certain parking on the vertical uh, stack also. Uh, this is a very pro uh, prominent location in Andheri, uh, on junction of Link Road and uh, this JP Road. So the property called K3, K4, I don't know why. But then I've got commercial building on top of it. Again, a height restriction. And here my basement, uh, they didn't really want to go for more basement. So only single basement was allowed. And ground floor and first floor was very precious for the development. So we had shopping, retail, and then uh, parking, and then we had offices above. So the system I used for, uh, this was like 160 odd cars, I used in four layers. So again, uh, a shuttle car parking system, the pallet moves horizontally, and then the uh, parking is done in uh, both the sides of the movement and uh, in two layers. And if you see the section, so you can see the ground first and second floor level, there is a retail activity. So I've got parking inside the basement and then I've got parking above the retail. And the same parking system is serving both these uh, separate parking uh, lots. So this is one of the solution where uh, the critical uh, you know, parking requirement can be achieved. And this is the section, a typical section where uh, you can see how uh, it is serving the basement as well as on the upper level. And then uh, the requirement of SUVs and sedan, again, SUV 2165 millimeters, SUV is a compromised SUV. You, you'll have to bifurcate or maybe categorize only these kind of SUVs will be allowed there. But this is what is the uh, solution we had uh, for this particular project. Then there are these kind of very small redevelopment projects. I've got n number of these. I've got at any given time 200 to 300 redevelopment kind of projects. When we talk about uh, different uh, big size project, mega projects like uh, the one which Mr. W was explaining, uh, more than uh, 14,000 apartments. Then I've got two townships where there are more than uh, 20,000 apartments. But there the mechanical parking is not required. Here the situation is such that this is again in Santa Cruz under the funnel, height restriction, only seven floors, and then where to do the parking. So the parking goes in basement. And then you have to find multiple solutions. One single type typology of uh, you know option will not work. You'll have to try multiple of them, a combination to achieve the desired numbers. Because if you don't provide the required numbers, the developer will have to forgo his precious FSI. So uh, we find those kind of solutions. Again, something similar, Yari Road, again under funnel, uh, but with different height restriction. So the requirement, particularly in this project, there is a mosque, there are tenant uh, tenants building, there is a tenants building, and there is a sale building, there are tenants shops, they need to be located there only, the, uh, the mosque you cannot touch. So with all those uh, you know, restrictions to provide the parking. And the parking numbers are always huge. As I said, in 2018, suddenly they said, well, whatever was there before multiplied by two. So 200% increase in the requirement and the kind of solutions. So I've got double car parkers, I've got pallet parking, I've got multiple uh, towers, and then I've got SUV section separate. I've got uh, sedan, sedan section, separate, so different kind of, you know, and besides that, the requirement was insufficient. So Ravi, if you remember, I had sent you this proposal and this right hand corner, the landscape garden, which they had shown, I had asked you to give me the proposal. I think you had sent them directly. So even after so much of jugglery, the parking requirement is insufficient. And then there are further more critical, Chembur, again, the same story, when you make a city, uh, near the airport or you make an airport inside the city, you are going to face the same situation again and again. The height restriction is there. And then we have got this 
uh, robotic pallet parking, you call them uh, uh, this, uh, whatever. Uh, I got different names. I Somebody call it pallet parking, somebody call it robotic parking. Somebody call was, it auto cart also. Auto cart also, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I've heard so many names for this system. So uh, the central, I know this building is completed and uh, they're providing this car parking inside. So very complex because you have got a tower above and then the tower, uh, the columns are going down and these columns should not actually affect your uh, cart movement and then you should be able to park uh, and again achieve the required numbers. This is just one comparison. Uh, recently we are doing this tower and then we had a comparison of that robotic car parking and typical uh, high-res tower in a commercial building, very prime location in Dadar, in front of uh, a railway track, 35-story uh, tower. So we were trying different options. And after permutation and combinations, somehow the client is confused. And we had to give multiple of these options. But then uh, you I, I kept this particular slide to show you that how important selection of the parking is, parking system is. That is changing the design of my core of the building. The central core, if you see, it is different for both the systems. So the architect, if he thinks that uh, I'll provide the parking later on, I'll just design the building first, not going to work for me. This is a very, very tricky case for me. This is that one project, I will not be able to tell you the name of the project because of the certain reasons, but uh, I got 3,000 apartments in the single uh, sector here and a requirement of 3,000 cars as per the DC regulation plus 25% uh, uh, visitors car parking. And I'm not being able to provide them in the given situation. So we had to go for three basements. And then suddenly government come up with a uh, gazette saying, hey, this is a government project. So government came up with a gazette saying, we don't want basement. And then I had to search for another option. So we are hunting for the options. Now my proposal is under approval, but I'm hunting for the uh, options. And believe me, the number of car parks, 5,715 in one location, in one layout for this multi-storied building. And that is what we are right now working on. Uh, already the work has started on site. So we have started fencing and all, and we are taking a decision which kind of system we have to use. So probably I'll uh, attend today's Balaji's lecture after this and I'll finalize my thought process. Probably that will help me to decide. And that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Vivek. That was that was very, very enlightening and very scary to see the kind of demands that we have today uh, mm -hmm. and, and uh, under severe constraints. I wish you all the very best for the project that you're talking about. Yep. Um, uh, a tough job in your hand, uh, especially when you've already started, you know, uh, the fencing and all that. I wish you all the very best. Thank you very much for that uh, very, very useful uh, presentation. Um, uh, Mamta, could we have the sponsor's video, please? Let's have the sponsor's video played. Sure. Is the volume okay, sir? Yeah. We understand the time and effort required to convert cotton to fabric. With over three decades of experience in manufacturing of textile machinery, we have evolved to offer end-to-end -end automation solutions for textile spinning mills. We are the world's leading manufacturer of yarn conditioning plants. Our textile machinery division has developed cutting-edge technology that has become benchmarks in the industry. We understand the hassles of limited parking space across the globe. Our car parking systems have resulted in enormous space savings with a 100% customer satisfaction. Every one of our systems is designed to make maximum use of the space available. 
With achieved heights of over 30 meters, our systems have proven to be one step above in terms of speed, quality, and service. We understand the need to reduce industrial footprint through vertical storage. Our automatic storage and intralogistics division caters to a wide range of industries, giving them direct savings in space and manpower. We work with customers around the globe to make sure our products add the maximum value to their operations. All our products are manufactured in-house in our world-class manufacturing facility in India. With over 180,000 square feet of manufacturing space, we have adopted effective operation strategies to maximize our efficiency at every process. All metal sheets are laser cut to give the finest edges at a very high accuracy. Precision CNC press brakes are used for bending of cut sheets. Our range of CNC machines produces a wide variety of components of all shapes and sizes with a perfect finish at a phenomenal accuracy. Heavy structures are shot blasted for a rust-free smooth surface finish before they are liquid painted prior to delivery. Our state-of-the-art powder coating line gives the best finish possible in terms of coating quality and enhances aesthetic of the component. We have a digital factory integration which is 100% paper free. We focus on connecting the various work centers to maximize our efficiency and process flow. Our automatic storage system has been extremely efficient with quick retrieval of stored goods. Product Wise Line Assembly Station has improved our delivery time over the last decade. CE certified and are assembled by expert engineers with a vast experience. We have a solid research and development team working seamlessly with our manufacturing, creating products that give stunning results in their functionality and longevity. We at Seeker always believe in adding maximum value in all our products that has resulted in a vast customer base across the globe. We have always worked towards the our goal of innovation through automation and we are committed to being your dependable partner in progress. Thank you, Mamata. That was our sponsor, Seeger Parking. And uh, Mamata, could we quickly have uh, project the next uh, webinar uh, from Focus as part of the knowledge series?
so that uh, our participants get to know what is in store for them uh, next. Yeah. So we have the fireman's lift uh, uh, requirements as laid out by NBC 2016. This is a webinar uh, to be held on the 18th of June, uh, 2021, at the same time, four o'clock. Uh, and our speaker is uh, the well-known consultant, uh, Mr. T.A.K. Matthews, uh, who is convener for National Building Code Part 8, 5A and 5B. So those of you who are interested on this topic uh, should uh, uh, remember to register for uh, this program as well. Uh, thank you, Mamata. So before I invite uh, Balaji to deliver his uh, presentation, uh, let me quickly introduce this very, very simple profile of Balaji that he sent across to us. Uh, uh, Balaji is an engineer from the 1979 batch of uh, Bits Pilani. He has had extensive senior level experience in engineered products in various MNCs. He has served in top management positions, Pan India, and has an experience in exports with global exposure. He's a dear friend who is a native of Chennai and is also based now in Chennai. Uh, so may I request... Uh, Mr. Balaji to now make his presentation, please. Thank you very much, Ravi. Uh, is my voice audible to everybody? Uh, it could be a little louder, Balaji. Okay. Thanks for checking. Uh, I must specifically thank Mr. Vivek Bole for making my job easier actually today. <laughs> because I think he has covered almost 50 to 60% of the points that I wanted to convey to the participants. Uh, before I get onto the presentation, uh, I would like to inform the uh, entire lot of participants that the thrust is more a combination of a macro level perspective, some of which Mr. Bole has covered, and also a certain perspective from a manufacturer's point of view. The technology as such, if you want me to begin, is uh, nothing sensational. Car parking technology has been around for a very, very long time. It could probably be visible and uh, be seen as new in India, but uh, in reality, it is not so. I mean, as far as I could uh, check and uh, when I spoke to a few people, it's been around in the US, I believe, for more than 100 years. I'm not sure. But there are some very, very old uh, installations uh, in the Western world. So we need to be aware of it. So with those uh, words, let me just start my presentation. Uh, just allow me to find the share screen option. I'm not uh, that familiar with this uh, web technology. Just give me a few Balaji, right at the bottom, you will find this green uh, icon which says share screen. Yes, yes, yes. I've, I've got you on click that. on that and then select uh, your presentation. I, I'll, I'll do that, yeah. Just, uh, just allow me a few yeah, seconds. Yeah. Take your time, take your time, no problem. In the meantime, let me tell the panelists uh, that uh, we would encourage you all to visit, uh, you know, the website ourfocus.co. It is not com uh, or in. It is uh, O-U-R-F-O-C-U-S dot C-O. We'd like you to go there and uh, will be lovely if you all can uh, sign up and uh, you know, become members of uh, the Forum of Critical Utility Services. Uh, I don't know what I've done here. Is this now visible, gentlemen? Yes, it Ladies. is. It, it is. is. Thank you. Okay, thank Go you. on. Finally figured it out. Okay, not that old after all. Okay, gentlemen, <laughs> uh, on screen you see my uh, email ID and my mobile number. So if anybody wants to touch base with me after this uh, uh, presentation, you're most welcome to do so. Now, this is just a, a visual representation of some of the points that Mr. Bole quite uh, eloquently outlined. I mean, it's, it's, it's not an easy kind of an answer. It's a complex uh, situation. And uh, the entire ecosystem needs to work together to come up with the best possible solution. Now, 
I have just given some data points to sensitize everybody to what are the challenges ahead. You know, as per 2018 data, which is what I could find as the most reliable in the web, India had 22 cars per thousand persons and China had 164. I just took China for a comparison, no specific reason. 164 cars per thousand individuals, that's a reference from where I took it. Now, my point is even if India reaches half in terms of per capita ownership of China by 2026, that is over a period of roughly eight years, it means 270% increase in cars parking space needs. Now that's a staggering number. And this is a very, very broad uh, you know, data analysis. Now I took another data. If you look at the number of cars that's being manufactured in India today, manufactured and sold, it's about 3.2 to 3.5. I just took an average of 3.2, ignoring last year's sale because last year could be an odd number. And again, the source here is given, it's car sales base. Uh, now, Mr. Bole spoke about a lot of uh, city codes and compliances. India being India, I'm assuming that a huge chunk of people may not comply with the codes. I made a very pessimistic assumption, right? I have discounted 70% of the people may not comply because a lot of car sales will get into rural areas, tier three towns, and they have no necessity to comply. I've just taken 30%. Now, this is a manufacturer's point of view. Even at 30% level, we are looking at a million cars parking spaces that need to be added every year in India, a million. Allow that number to sink. That is, a, a, you know, it, it's a huge number. Now, the question that we need to ask ourselves as part of the ecosystem is to supply 1 million car parking spaces of varying technology that I'll talk about just now. I mean, you need to have an ecosystem of good quality vendors all around, essentially. And these vendors need to have the application knowledge and they need to have the capability right now out of the, you know, uh, they need to have the capability to scale up to the numbers. The last point I mentioned that uh, the building codes that Mr. Bode touched upon, Efficient utilization is the only option. There's no other option. And the only way car parking can get efficient is to go vertical. That is probably 90% of uh, the answer. And I would say about 10 to 15% of the answer also comes with the integration to emerging IoT technology. How efficiently we use information technology to operate the whole system. These are all the points that has been covered earlier. Optimal utilization of space is a must. There are multiple design choices to suit various budget and space points. It's very easy to construct, very easy to start up and absolutely user friendly. Users may need a little bit of handloading initially from the manufacturers and suppliers. It's customizable to suit uh, uh, varying shapes and sizes of cars. And I think going forward, all the multi-level car parking designers need to integrate uh, a particular number of charging points for uh, you know, electric vehicles that, that will become mandatory. Right now it is not so, but I think it will become mandatory. And a car parking is also, it provides you a safe protected parking uh, uh, area. It is not exposed to the elements. It improves the vehicle life. It's typically quite low on uh, maintenance. I would say it's about three to three and a half percent in terms of uh, you know, annual maintenance cost. You can adjust it suitably for inflation. And from a very human angle, all of us need to understand that uh, India tends to treat the lowest rung of uh, our workers with a little bit of indifference. That's my view, personal view. I think a, a multi-level car parking provides, uh, or an automatic car parking from a very human angle reduces the stress for the driver, be it the owner driver or a, a driver driver. I have picked up all the available types of uh, car parking system that are there in India. I think most of which uh, Mr. Bole touched upon. And I've summarized here, there could be a few that uh, I have not mentioned because they're very few in number. Uh, you have, uh, they, these are all jargons that are used in the system. And I think I will also show you short videos to demystify the jargons that are being used. Like somebody said, uh, robotic parking, and uh, somebody said it's an auto cart parking and a uh, stack parking. I think the industry needs uh, to standardize all these terminologies today. These terminologies have evolved over a period of time. I don't think there's been any strict adherence to any jargons, but I think we need to standardize. In stack parking, you have uh, uh, basically a two-level stack, which is very popular. We also have pit stackers. We have multi-level puzzle parking systems. We have, in puzzle parking, we also have pit puzzle. We have drive-through puzzle. 
So we have rotary system, and I have classified it for sedan as well as SUV well model. We have automated cart system. I think that's what people refer to as a robotic car, uh, car parking. Uh, we have uh, tower parking, and uh, there are also certain other useful, uh, you know, car parking accessories or allied products like a car lift, a turntable, and the last is point number eight and nine is integrating with uh, the emerging technologies. You know, that will also make the whole system efficient. This is just a picture of a, a, a stack parking system. And uh, what you see below is a pitch stacker. Allow me to just play the video. It's a very short video clip of about uh, two minutes. Oh, sorry, yeah. Okay, I'll stop it there because it's just to explain the concept. <clears throat> Let me go back to the presentation. Uh, what we have uh, shown below here is a, a pitch stacker system. I'll play a short video for that. Now, there's a specific reason why uh, I wanted to play this video. You can actually see the car driver struggling to take the uh, car inside. This struggle is not because of the car parking mechanism design. It's because of the driveway. The constraint is a driveway. And this is a very, very common problem that uh, we as designers encounter. Because we are asked to design a automated car parking system with a driveway width as low as 4.2, 4.3 meters. We can design and give it. That's not a problem. We can install it. The mechanical system will work well. But the driver will curse us for the rest of his life. Whenever he sees the board, whichever manufacturer it is, they're going to curse because they cannot turn the car. And increasingly in India, we find uh, the percentage of women driving cars is also going up. And so we need to make sure that uh, the driving experience and the parking experience is comfortable for uh, women also. So driveway becomes a very critical area. And I'm sure Mr. Uh, Bole and uh, the rest of his fraternity would uh, factor that in. Stop there. I think this part also, Mr. Bole touched upon. Basically, this is a dimensional requirement for a stack uh, a parking system. It's a combination of sedan sedan and a sedan SUV. Uh, we have given some uh, dimensional details. 
uh, i'm sure the participants can uh, take some inputs uh, from the organizer all these presentations will be in the uh, website i think they would upload it they, you can pick it up later compromising on these dimensions is possible from a designer side we can do that but like i just said earlier when you are viewing the video is, is that it will uh, reduce the user experience for no fault of the designer so and mr bole also mentioned that uh, when it comes to height many people just go by the height of the car i would uh, caution that uh, it may not be adequate going forward because a lot of people add a lot of accessories on top you have a spoiler you have an antenna that's sticking out and i think one has to make allowance for that so going forward i would request everybody to be aware of this these are all approximate dimensional indications and uh, you would be better off uh, consulting with a reputed uh, car park uh, manufacturer right at the beginning when you conceptualize a project along with your architect i think that would be a better way to do it i think that's a point also mr bole mentioned this is a, a puzzle car park system i think this is a system for about 350 cars let me see if we can just get the video for this this is in a hospital it's a 3 minute video but i will just fast forward it it plays us so that it becomes shorter well it may not be the largest but at the time this video was made i think it was the largest a woman has been shown in this video just to uh, show the audience that the whole experience is quite comfortable and uh, this is an integration with the uh, parking management system also so as you all saw this uh, this system of about 350 uh, car parking slots uh, needed hardly about uh, two people to manage the entire system it's integrated with the 
parking management system. So that's an advantage that you see. This is an approximate dimensional indication for a multi-level car park system. Now I'll just skip this. We can go all the way up to eight levels. Essentially, that's what it means. This is a pit puzzle. videos yeah we have just speeded up the entire video yeah. This is a drive through puzzle system. Where essentially in a puzzle system, one car drives behind the other. Now you can see this vehicle going to the slot, uh, which is in the rear. Basically, with one driveway, you can uh, use the system. So where there's a space constraint. I think rotary parking system is something which uh, many would be familiar with. This shows you the dimensional details required for a, a rotary car parking system. It can be a sedan, which means 16 cars, and SUV, which means 12 cars can be done. Essentially, in a, in, a, in a footprint where you can park about two or three cars, a rotary system can take it up to 12 or 16 cars. This is an automated car parking system, which people refer to as a, a robotic car parking. We have just imported a video from YouTube, but there are many Indian systems also here in India installed and working. That's a car lift bringing it up. This is what is referred to as automated cart. For this system also, we've given approximate dimension that would be required. Some gentlemen had posted a question uh, in the chat mode on uh, the retrieval time and the parking time, and I've already responded to him. 
typically it's about anywhere between 30 seconds to four minutes for uh, depending on the type of system you use and depending on the parking management system you have. Now, it's specific to automated car, uh, uh, the point that needs to be noted is the more the number of lifts that you have, the faster the system would be. I think that's a point that uh, the gentleman who posed the question should note specific to this type of system, automated car. Tower parking, I think Mr. Bolet touched upon this uh, in a lot of systems in Bombay. I think uh, one area where he mentioned they've gone up to a height of even 70 meters. Uh, this is a project in Chennai where uh, you can see even the facade uh, of a tower parking can be used for uh, signages and advertisements or uh, logos. So that's an advantage they have. Here again, we have given dimensions for a, a typical uh, tower car park system. And what you see on top is a turntable in case you have a, a, a space restriction to uh, change the direction of the car. I think this turntable will help. The, the, the operational logic is what is outlined here. It's, it's very simple. I mean, you just put it in the lift and then it automatically takes it to the empty slot and picks it up. Uh, this is something which I mentioned just earlier, where the signages and uh, the branding can be done. And uh, because it's uh, the vertical height is uh, even about uh, 50, 60 meters, it'll be visible. So that's an added advantage you have. Now, for the purpose of this uh, webinar, what we did was uh, I had requested our uh, design team to come up with a very simple, uh, you know, um, uh, logic of how many cars can be parked given a particular space. Now, we just for the purpose of this webinar, we assume the space available is 30 meters by 30 meters. That's the floor space available. We also assume that there will be no height restriction. So with this kind of an assumption, uh, uh, on the left, you'll see various types of uh, popular uh, automated car parking systems currently in India. Stacker, we took Stacker. So in this space, you can have 88 uh, cars to be parked. All are sedans, we have not considered SUVs. If it's a puzzle park, we can uh, go up to 150 uh, cars <clears throat> and uh, that will occupy a height of 12 meters. It's a six by five matrix and there'll be six modules. If it's a rotary for a height of 18 meters, that's the maximum it can go to. You can go up to 240 cars. For an auto cart, it's 175 with seven levels. And for a tower system, it's 290 cars with 11 levels. Now for each of these uh, layouts are available, And if anybody wants to have a look at uh, rough layouts for each of this, they can pick it up from the presentation. These are some of the you know, manufacturing process uh, that a good quality uh, car parking manufacturer has to adhere to. You know, because it's, it's basically completely structural. There's a lot of care has to be taken for uh, the quality of structurals. And a lot of precision needs to be brought in uh, you, uh, where, you, where you drill holes so that the alignment is precise so that the rattling and the noise uh, is not there. And also painting quality becomes important. No? Epoxy coating is advisable in many areas. So anybody who's uh, selecting a car parking uh, vendor probably needs to check if their facility has got all these uh, arrangements so that the finished product quality will be better and the life will be longer. Car lift, I, we touched upon it when we spoke about uh, auto cart. <clears throat> um, uh, we can design car lifts for capacity of two tons, two and a half or three tons. Uh, these are quite ideal uh, where you can use the open terrace for uh, car parking. And uh, this also integrates smoothly with the facade because of the vertical height. Turntable system, we briefly touched upon it. A parking management system where uh, the number of uh, car parks, uh, the, the number of slots are very high is uh, probably something that uh, all architects and builders need to consider because manual is uh, uh, probably would be a messy affair going forward. It'd be difficult. So a completely integrated parking management system would be a good solution. This is our suggestion. I mean, you can integrate it based on the vehicle classification. You can integrate with boom barriers. You can use it for, uh, you know, pay and park kind of assistance. You can have a mobile app for the users if it's a residential or a large commercial. You can have report uh, statistics generated. Uh, you can have signages uh, built into them. You can have indication lamps. You can also have an identification yeah. of uh, free space even before they enter the 
car parking area that's also possible that's also possible nee pode with this gentleman uh, what i would like to do is i just want to give you a broad feel of the emerging challenges in terms of a million car parking spaces here that's a kind of you know slots that we need to generate i just gave you a feel of uh, different types of parking and the jargons used i have matched the jargons with the visuals by short videos so the floor is open for any questions uh, ravi i leave it to you and the moderator i would be quite happy to take on any questions good wonderful presentation both of uh, both the presenters have come out very well thank you i'm very impressed let me congratulate uh, both vivek as well as balaji thank you for the outstanding presentations they made uh, technical content of a very high order the way in which you brought out all the options especially the various choices uh, between the stack puzzle rotary automatic automated and car lifts one uh, in terms of questions there are only two or three which has come so far on asset and the first one of course bal subramanian's question you already have replied the retrieving time as well as the optimum waiting time is the question so balaji on his own has given a reply and he also very briefly said it can be as uh, short uh, between uh, uh, about 30 seconds to as much as uh, around 4 4 minutes time um, why the longer time period uh, balaji sir uh, bal subramanian sir for balaji's reply yeah yeah see it's like this uh, uh, that's why i said that it's a combination of various factors yeah uh, see in in a in a in a vertical system for instance if the number of for, let's take a cart as an example if the number yeah. of uh, lifts are lesser mm. you know you can design an automated car system with one lift two lift three lifts depending on uh, the space that's available mr bole would be able to talk about it uh, at length but uh, where uh, possibly you can use three lifts if you compromise and go with one lift naturally the retrieval time and the parking time would be more mm. you know that's why uh, it's very essential for uh, the designer the architect and uh, possibly the key users to sit and talk about this aspect what is the retrieval time that they are willing to live with i'll give you another example if you have got a let's say a, a very large parking system about uh, let's say 100 200 meters away from the building which typically happens in areas where there's a lot of space also available yeah right you can actually on when they are entering the building itself entering or exiting the building you can have a, a parking management system where they swipe their card right when they are entering the lift let's say in uh, the 10th floor or the 9th floor of the building they swipe the card they come down and then they take a walk uh, to that uh, parking lot which is maybe 100 meters away the whole process may take about 2 to 3 minutes that user may see the car already come down and then waiting at the ground level for him or her hmm. so he or she may feel that the retrieval time is practically zero right i'm i'm talking about a realistic perspective no from a very clear technical perspective the time remains unchanged the time is still mm. about 3 minutes or so but the user mm. experience would say that the time is practically nothing because you have integrated with the technology where the gentleman will, uh, or the person the lady who is getting out of the yeah. office is swiping it right at the lift when they are getting into the office lift it yeah. takes time to travel down and then they take their own time to walk to the car parking it takes about 2 to 3 minutes they'll find that the car is waiting they'll say it's a okay. wonderful system whereas so technology good, is the same yeah. very very good combination between the building management system bms yeah. and the parking management system pms good yeah. very interesting very interesting praful nai would like to ask this question can sprinklers be system be integrated because car parking is also very high concentration of the uh, fuel load coming and anything wrong happens so otherwise normally all parking the building code uh, requires the sprinklers to be provided so can the sprinkler system be integrated with the question yes sir it can be integrated uh, there are a few projects where we have done it but the sprinkler system has not been supplied by us the architect uh. or the builder or the user have uh, gone for a fire uh, design uh, system supplier we have actually mm -hmm. even executed for a, a government building in uh, kerala kerala trivandrum corporation where for about 110 uh, car park multi level i think it's about five or six levels yeah it was also yeah. on tv yeah. news it was inaugurated by pinarayi vijayan there okay. they have gone for a fire sprinkler system directly yes it can be done not a problem so can we did be done at the highest height or would you do and the vertical horizontal nozzle more so if there is going to be vertical movement of the car between abc heights 
or horizontally. So where exactly would that be? Is it for each of the particular uh, carriage way you put the sprinkler insulation? Otherwise, normally an automatic sprinkler for a car parking, you're aware, in the National Building Code Part 4 uh, yeah. regularly brings down where it should be done for the uh, specifically parking provisions or a must for the have the sprinkler. Where will you provide? I think it's a, heights. it's a combination of both, sir, to answer your question. Huh. It's a combination okay. of both. From what I physically uh -huh. saw at Trivandrum, it's a combination of both. Yeah. That's what I physically saw. Yeah. Sir, can I intervene? The fire department are very clear that they want at each vertical stack uh, individualist yeah. uh, height, individual sprinklers. Now, correct. They are not uh, sanctioning any new projects without that. Very I good. think Satish Ayanga's voice. Yeah. Very good, sir. That's a uh, welcome, uh, Satish Ayanga, for the additional input on which has come from our side, our treasurer, uh, Satish Ayanga. Thank you so much, sir, for the thank very you, valuable you. input. Dr. SP and still people feel the system may break down. Is it a mindset change that uh, change not, uh, not the technological one? I mean, uh, is it a doubt which is uh, misplaced? Uh, where would you like to say? Both of you can take the answer, both Balaji as well as uh, uh, Vivek. Vivek, you take. Uh, Vivek can probably so, answer this question. Particularly, yeah. particularly when it comes to redevelopment projects, uh, I told yeah. you, uh, this is almost like uh, compulsory. But what I've seen, when the tenants or the members of the society, uh, they have to uh, actually accept the uh, mechanical parking, they have got certain reservations. And most of the time, what happens, they go for conventional parking and the developer uh, gets those uh, multi-level car parking, uh, automated car parking for sale. So mm -hmm. when it comes to selling the apartment, the buyer doesn't have choice. This is what I can say. But then okay. people have got reservations. And unless the system is, you know, somebody is very comfortable with the system, he has used it, he has got uh, certain, you know, stereotypes in his mind. And people feel that, uh, like uh, what Mr. Balaji was showing, entering the car uh, inside the pallet, it's a task for a few people. Even, even my driving is not good. I would not take chance with my Mercedes. Okay. So it's something uh, that is even difficult, more difficult for ladies also. So mm -hmm. I think that is what is the reservation, no reservation. Mm -hmm. And then because people are compromising on the height of the parking, the pallet parking, so that is where, uh, you know, that increases your doubt yeah. that with, whether your car will be damaged from top. So okay. I think if we provide a good system with proper spacing, it's uh, there is no uh, reason why people should not accept it. Yeah, possibly CV Krishna's question uh, brings in uh, uh, not a teaser. He has got a three-in-one question on that. The first one he wants to ask is, is it just car parking? The word is car parking. Or is it, he's asking, can we also do it for transport buses or a small minivans type? So is it just car only we can do it? Or has it been done in other ones also? Because especially schools and other area where number of buses are more. So the answer can be yes or no to that. Or we stop so that, only with car. Is that it? No, the answer to the question is yes, it can be done. Very simple it answer. It can be done. It can yeah. be done. So, but but the, the caveat is very simple. I mean, yeah. it should also be commercially viable to both the buyer as well as the designer. See, Correct. from a designer's perspective, yeah, unless unless a project has some element of repeatability, yeah, you know, it would it would be an enormous you know uh, uh, resources that would be used in one specific project for one specific solution. You know, wonderful. So, so see, that would be the... anticipated. anticipated your answer, uh, Balaji. <laughs> you know what he's asking? Can you therefore give an approximate ratio of comparison between? Number of car parking, car parking and conventional flow as well as MLCP. What would be the cost difference? I'm sure then I'm going to ask the question, same question to uh, also Vivek, because then he'll be able to indicate the space in FSI in terms of what does it mean for additional one to be provided or conventional. First, I want Krishna to answer, then uh, I want uh, Vivek to take over. Yes, sir, we will, we will answer this. I think uh, there is a lot of, I think I see 19 questions that have popped up. Once we finish answering this question, I think we should take it in the same order in which they have come. I think that will be nice for yeah, us to okay. moderate. Uh, I will answer right. this specific question. Yeah. Now, uh, that was a broad, I mean, that's a commercial, I think, is what the gentleman wants, right? Yes. Now, stacker is the cheapest at this okay, point stacker. in time. Okay, I got uh, it. A, a normal stacker, two-level stacker, 
right? Mm. A stacker, I would say, is about 1.5 to 1.6 lakhs, approximately. Yeah. 1.5 to 1.6 lakhs, excluding of taxes, should take care of parking two cars. Yeah. Give or take a little people bit. People have put it. A lot of people have put it already. Now, I can see. At the same time, yeah. when, when it comes to stackers, a vital point that I want to bring to the attention of everybody, which yeah. I think uh, probably I missed out and it's my mistake, is that yeah. the safety aspects in a stacker is very, very minimal. We have read of cases, I think probably everybody would have read, of a, of a child also getting crushed mm. by a car which was uh, you know, coming down mm -hmm. because uh, sensors were not provided or some such thing. Okay. So while, while the existing price levels of stacker is in the region of one, it can even go as low as 1.2 or 1.3. I'm right. just giving okay. some very broad number. It yeah, becomes that's also an answer. That's also an answer. answer. I'll take for Atul Pandey. You've also raised the same question. On that, uh, would you like to add something on that, Vivek, on the cost uh, comparison? Sir, allow so, me to complete. Uh, Mr. Bole, sir, allow me to complete. Yeah. It become, like, like I said, this is something which needs to be done at the conceptualization stage. If the architect and the users decide that Stacker is the best solution, which is perfectly fine, they need to take care of the safety aspect. That becomes very critical. You yeah, need to coming, the type of sensors that, used, sir. the number of sensors you want. Yeah. Once the cost comparison is over, yeah. I will go to come to that because C.V. Krishna is one who rightly knows he'll give the reply. His question is exactly on the same thing on uh, are there safety standards and safety norms to implement an MLCP. So therefore, on that particular thing, I'm aware of the NBC provision, but that does not specifically bring that one. But uh, for the multi-level car parking and especially automated one, the type of additional, other than loading issue, which is structural safety issue. Number two, the other one is the fire safety issue, which is sprinkler. But this is regarding the mechanical movement of the uh, whole uh, uh, automated car parking one, where those safety standards. So maybe you can, you may like to answer that, sir. Uh, I think, see, Balaji, this is actually your question. If I were to talk about the space, I already given you yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, that one slide where I had given comparison of MLCP versus automated car parking, yes. where the footprint is half, height is 60%, yes. and volumetrically it is almost like 50, uh, 40 to 50%. Okay. So that is the saving space wise. Yes, correct. Yes. Uh, correct. Uh, as Very far good. as uh, uh, cost comparison is concerned, many of my clients they consider up to 6 lakh rupees that vertical yes. car, pallet parking yes. is. Yes. Uh, advisable because otherwise multi-level car parking cost us almost like 8 to 10 lakh rupees per car park. 35 square meter, that is almost like 400 square feet of area goes for one car parking in MLCP. Cost me 2,000 rupees per square feet. See the calculation. Wonderful. I think that's a very useful uh, information uh, given between both of you. And uh, Jalveer Singh, Jalveer Singh's uh, question is already replies so are not repeating. Saying fire safety challenges including detection alarm and control. And since you said it can be done, uh, I take it, uh, don't want to open out this particular point of time on that. Uh, Mr. Mandat Pardi, uh, he's more worried about the structural safety. Does the structure, especially tower and puzzle have to steel fabrication or can it also be made of RCC? Because whatever you have seen, they all more maybe steel fabrication related one. So, uh, so then of course his related question is, if it is going to be steel, how do you take care of the additional fire protection for those columns? Because you've got at least two, two to three hours fire resistance. That means, oh, are you going to give the encasement or something like that? So that is Mandar Pardi's question. Uh, most of the time, what happens if my uh, vertical car parking system is below the building or inside the building, I always uh. tend to take supports from the existing structural RCC. You know, uh. So uh, many places where I've got vertical tower, I have taken the lateral support from the core, core of the building. So uh -huh. that gives me a lot of saving in terms of vertical, uh, you know, uh, the steel yeah. structure. Yeah. So it's, it's a composite structure. It's not yeah, like... It's a uh, you're right. I was about to suggest composite structure, steel and case on that. Very good. Uh, and uh, of course, his question is, how do you make if it is only steel, additional fire protection of minimum two to three hours? Because steel, uh, with temperature, steel also can have the structural integrity being uh, yes, questioned. Yes, you know yes, what I'm, yes. deformation and all that. Yes. Uh, particularly, uh, when it comes to the cores, uh, we have got primary and secondary structural steel, which is uh, encased either in concrete or vermiculite plaster, because this is not yeah. structural steel as such. Okay. This is not going okay. to compromise the integrity of the building. Yeah. yeah. Structural integrity of the building. We, we I don't think except uh, those fire sprinklers and smoke detectors, anything else is required. Oh, very good. 
this question must be you will come to you vivek uh, mayuri naik very nice question for tower parking typology is an internal stair for access mandatory what levels minimum access is desired considering maintenance and safety needs and also planning required when when a question comes on this one how do you decide i'm sure the mayuri must be having some idea with respect to space planning and how where do you put that That is my so, next question. So maximum yeah. maximum vertical uh, levels I have taken are thirty six. Yeah. Okay. So thirty six levels and a, a maintenance staircase uh, going up along the vertical car parking tower. That is what is I think fine with. You know, uh, I don't think there is any problem with uh, that much of height. But uh -huh. uh, one thing is there. Uh, we I would like to add here when a vertical tower has got Uh, two pallets on either side of the vertical movement, the the cart movement. Mm -hmm. Instead of two, you can have okay. three. You can have even four. That exactly. will affect okay. your retrieval it time. Can. Yes, uh, yes. It can be. It can be provided in residential buildings exactly. where uh, retrieval time is not important. Exactly. And efficiency and cost is more important. Very yes, good. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. That that's a good reply. Uh, well, they are not named it, but I think this is an answer to Balaji said that. Ladies are also an important uh, people driver. He also showed a visual of a lady coming. So the question is that in the uh, uh, anonymous attendee, the level for the uh, lower level parking, one plus two stack parking system space between the two slots and moving space limited. Lady owners reluctant as a dress gets uh, spoiled by the grease. All these are typical issues in a limited slot system of a housing activity. Is the doubt really a very genuine one, or is it a perceived one? uh sir from a lady from a lady I'm, i'm assuming that the anonymous attendee is a lady from a yeah. lady's perspective if they raise a question definitely it's genuine sir we have to acknowledge it we cannot say it's uh, not okay genuine. we take it as genuine sir <laughs> we have to i think uh, uh see at the end of the day the width can be increased a little bit from a designer's perspective it's not a problem it mm. can be increased by about 25 mm or 50 mm uh -huh. but then the kind of dresses that the ladies wear i want to introduce uh -huh. a lighter weight to this entire uh, discussion i uh -huh. mean when there's a slight wind also i think the dresses tend to fly and even if yes. you give one meter gap it will go and yes. hit the post so what do we do correct, correct. <laughs> correct. so you should so have yeah we have, we, we acknowledge the problem code. we, we acknowledge the code needed no no it's a very controversial topic i will never say i know that. i know we acknowledge I that know. it's a problem we acknowledge yeah. that yeah. but at this point in time as a designer we would be very happy yeah. to give whatever space that they want we have no issue yes yes <laughs> i think I'm, I'm, Malaji, you are only talking about uh, uh, this puzzle car and double car stack. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you are yeah. talking about vertical tower or robotic yes. parking, yes. I don't think this is the issue. Problem is all. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, you're right. That is why you're right. The prelude, the prelude to that. They said for this particular stuff. You know, the next one is the best question. I think I'm sure you're all going to bowl over. You said sedan, each car you're given. You know the wonderful thing. Suppose the car is uh, of petrol, diesel, LPG, CNG. can you put car anywhere or are there particular thing for each of these particular combination there no so it can be any sp anchuri brilliant question it can be put anywhere it can be put there there was there was another question by mr krishnan where yeah. he specifically raised a question for uh, the need for uh, charging stations i yeah, think I'm i covered that, oh thank so you thank i'm coming you. to that thank you thank you yeah i'm coming to that sir because i thought they are all in a series of i try to put them stacked up in that so you you it doesn't matter really depend irrespective of the car uh, But why am I telling you? We forgot to put uh, uh, electric EV. The EV is going to the next one. Uh, yeah. In which case, charging stations are normally when you when you park the car, you also have charging coming on that. In which case, your charging points also. Will, but it's a good question. Very good question, I should say. Uh, this this question the, can this question can best be uh, you know discussed and answered by me and Mr. Vivek Bole, assuming uh, that he aligns with me. See, mm -hmm. like he mentioned that there should be a proportion of cars that you decide for sedan and for SUVs. Yeah. At the time of conceptualization of the project, there should also be a proportion of cars which should desire as EVs. No, is it five percent? Is it ten percent? That yeah. has to be aligned, signed off. At that point, number of slots can be provided for charging. Not a problem. Uh -huh. Okay. I, 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 I hope Mr. Bolle agrees with me. I agree. Okay. I agree. Absolutely. While uh, while one of our uh, good friends wanted to have to cover on the mini bus, we have a nice question from Mayuri. Mayuri says, "What is it? You only put all your eggs in the car basket. See, Pune region." Uh, two wheeler numbers also huge. Would you like to have architect uh, Vivek Gosle's views on this? 
low space index solution and does the opine technology based on two wheelers can we also have that for stacking another one so uh, for uh, uh, information i'm doing mayuri mayuri is the name of the question okay go ahead okay. please reply to so uh, i'm doing one it park in pune uh, for uh, phenolix uh, group you know the ah. piping group so ah, it's yeah. an it park at hinjewadi and i have got car lift in fact i cannot call it car lift it's a bike lift for two wheelers okay uh -huh. but certainly i'll not suggest something like uh, two wheelers uh, multi level car parking uh, automated car parking because yeah. car uh, this two wheelers the driveway width is very less so uh -huh. if you um, uh, design it efficiently i think yeah. it is much cheaper to do it uh, otherwise okay okay good of course you you answered it already but in any case since you asked the director sunil day is asking you uh, can you indicate a cost for about 500 car parking is a simple because maybe you must be having a immediate issue i think i think you broadly indicate some cost levels uh, uh, vivek i think we can put that formula on that yeah, 500 yeah, see depending upon the, the type, type of, of the parking type of parking yeah like yeah. if you yeah. go for double car park 1.5 lakh rupees if you go for vertical car parking yeah. up to 6 lakh robotic up to 8 9 lakh eight depending lakh. upon the type there are multiple of these options and depending upon the situation and the requirement the pricing will fluctuate okay and i think you you already answered uh, uh, sharmishta mukherjee's question on that the question directly is that how much is the cost per parking i think you indicated how much yes. you already Sir, so let's, i'm let's, not going into i'm mr. not suresh, going into that mr suresh allow me to come in with your permission many yeah, people please, have asked this, many people have asked this question on the pricing and mr bulloy and i did mention two points let me just summarize very clearly depending on the technology that please, one sir, wants please. and uh, it can vary from 75000 rupees per car i'm sorry uh, 1.5 lakhs per car uh -huh. going all the way up to 8 lakhs the per car slot is very simple it, no but it I can vary from 1.5 lakhs na? vivek said 6 to 8 you said 1.5 to 8 no 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 i said 1.5 to 8 1.5 to 8 is for vertical stacking exactly exactly okay, okay. 1.5 okay. lakhs to 8, 8 lakhs per slot is the range so it's uh -huh. it's too wide a range you know unless the technology uh -huh. is frozen and the kind of integration they would like to have with the iot is desired one cannot freeze it but for budgetary purposes take it as 1.5 to 8 lakhs you should be okay per car space mm. they are asking a very interesting question on that is that they are so totally sold on both your proposition that they will all go for that that technology is good but managing and implementing the system who is going to look after that particular one you know this is the the pms business and uh, uh, it all depends the operator is it going to be the owner or that car parking one are going to have special technology people the operation maintenance issue etc etc uh, etc and they were, are you also going to cover it through appropriate insurance for the risk claims and all that so interesting financial issues all the same but the fact that manapa fells is an important aspect would you like, have you ever thought of that operation maintenance and the related insurance risk uh i'll just take it one by one on the operation and maintenance in my presentation i had given an indicative figure that it will be about 3 to 3 and a half percent per year uh -huh. and that does not include the power cost that's one okay now okay. when it comes to insurance the asset owner is the the person who should normally insure the system not okay. the supplier okay. so the asset owner who is the owner of the asset they need uh -huh. to insure uh -huh. so for the, the the supplier has got very limited say on that uh -huh. right okay Okay. And the third okay. part is the third part is I think uh, the third part of the question was what about the people required for operation maintenance? We right. have shown a video for about 350 cars with a reasonable degree of integration with technology. The yeah. whole system needed only three people. In my view, only uh -huh. two people are required, but the system showed three. Right? Very. I would say I would say for about 500 cars, if we integrated with the uh, technology, I think probably about two people would be more than adequate. I see. Very good. That's interesting. Uh, you are aware part two of the National Building Code, the new one already provide assets and facility management and all the critical utility services. How do you maintain that? Operate maintain is a separate chapter coming on that. And okay. parking is also covered in that in detail. Fantastic. Uh, with, the, with the Kodan Rajan wants to know about NOC required or any NOC required for automatic car parking from any of the agencies or authorities. Mr. Bore, I think his voice is yeah. cut. As far as Mumbai is concerned, we have got uh... Uh, the approval authority MCGM, the corporation and the department is uh, traffic and coordination. So they study the drawing submitted by the architect and they give the approval. Okay. I think primarily the operational issue must be the worry. See, as I said, can be a structural safety issue, should not fall down 
fire safety issue, that's another concern over there. I think as long as that's the, and then the other one is the life safety involved of accidents discovered, it's fine. Uh, I think Krishna has raised one more. I think we already have answered that. Uh, bus related issue is already answered, so we don't repeat that. Uh, that's a nice question. If one car malfun malfunctions in a particular one, you know, in the whole system, can it affect the whole thing or are there ways by which you can bypass it out? So this is a question Chris CV Krishna has asked. In one a, in a car in the system malfunctions and slipped down, something happened, or the driver has not taken it. You said, you already said that, Balaji, that you have to have a little amount of training when you use the... Exactly, uh, yeah. Uh, in yeah. such type of thing. If it happens over there, what type yeah. of... Yeah, please. See, normally, when in a multi-level car park, in a, Kazupa, in a puzzle park, if you remember, I said that it's a 6 by 5 and 6 modules. I use the word module. Uh -huh. Each module will have six level height and uh, five across. It's like a matrix. Uh -huh. Imagine a mathematical matrix. So okay. if one car in a particular module is uh, having a problem, that module yeah. can be isolated. There is no problem. It doesn't no mean problem. that the entire system gets uh, no impacted. That particular okay. module alone, that module of six by five, 30, 25, 30 cars, 30 cars can be isolated, right? Yeah. Yeah. So in, in, a, in a 500 car system, if you... Uh, you no, know, split the modules in consultation with the builder and the architect. If you decide the modules, you can uh -huh. isolate the module. So it's not going to impact the entire system. Oh, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. Yeah. There's a nice question, which of course uh, uh, Vivek can take. Where's the best one? Is it residential high end, residential redevelopment, or commercial? Which is the one easy to operate, works well without difficulty? They have the fixed working timings and all that. You know what I'm trying to say is so, in terms of this parking, where do you think it fits in? Mayuri wants to get that information. Architects and equipment suppliers with both of you, what, where would you place? You know, fortunately, both of you are on two sides of the thing, both uh, uh, Vivek and uh, uh, Balaji sir. Yeah, so uh, the answer is very simple. A residential building has got a peak period of six hours, but the commercial building always have a peak period of only one hour. So the interval time required is much, much efficient in commercial uh -huh. buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens in residential building? It starts the functioning at seven o'clock in the morning and uh, keeps working till uh, 12. So peak hour is very, very long and retrieval is not the issue. So uh, depending upon the situation again, I would always suggest commercial building should have uh, the parking systems which are very, very efficient in terms of retrieval. So the answer is very clear. Where do you think it can come? Uh, High-end residential, you think it's, it's working? Yeah, absolutely. They are working properly. So this I, I, work. only only issue the Indian culture, Indian system. Yeah. Where people people uh, wash their car every day in the morning, whether it is uh, one lakh rupee car or one crore rupee car. You know. Yeah. So how to wash that car in the? Uh, so that that's one. That is the, I, that is the only issue. Yeah, incidentally. Uh, there is a very nice uh, intervention, not a question, from a gentleman called Nadim Palli Ramana. And I think he's one of uh, a very great supporter. He's also a technology provider. And uh, he also feels it can be done. I'm sure he must be still uh, there. Uh, he has also tried to indicate some of the options which are available. He has already done that in, uh, uh, in uh, Andhra Pradesh or Telangana. I don't remember exactly. So you wanted to reply one of the questions of the Christian once uh, earlier. Balaji sir, you remember? I said I'll come back to you on that. Which one, sir? You remember? I, 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 no, I think the question was on uh, electric vehicles, which we answered, I think. Which you answered? Electric vehicle, yeah. of course, I uh, myself raised I, that. I do not, I could not recollect the uh, other questions of Mr. Krishna. That's that, what I uh, thought. I, I thought we covered all the things. Uh, we are by and large covered all the things. And somebody also said so, that uh, the time is also getting over 5.40 for 7 or something like that. But, I would, as, uh, uh, but uh, if there uh, are, as long as... Uh, Lokesh Gupta has again asked a question a few minutes back on EV charging points, which I raised already. You answered that. Yeah, That's yeah. a nice question on what is the lifespan for this particular thing? I mean, when you put all this automatic, because all the equipment's moving, gears, you know, everything has got to work, continuous maintenance required, greasing. Uh, Sir, these are a lifespan, 20 years, 25 years. Or you, you, you want to put a value I would, on I that? Would, I, would, I would blindly say that for any mechanical car parking system on the mechanical part, the life is at least 20 years if the components have been chosen well by a okay. good manufacturer and uh -huh. if they've been painted and maintained well. Easily 20 years, minimum. Uh -huh. No problems. Okay. Now, if you're, going to, if you're going to integrate it with the modern control systems, which are PLC operated, on yes, the sir. PLC part, on the sensors part, they may not be that robust to last for 20 years. They uh -huh. may probably require frequent admission, some kind of change. No, okay. That's a okay. different aspect. But for the life okay. of the system as such, 
easily 20 years not a okay. problem okay very good sir bal subramanian started the question bal subramanian again come back the last question he has got what is asking again fire we ask ventilation system is asking of course i am sure in any building ventilation becomes an important common yeah. smoke extraction and all that i'm sure it can be easily be done like the yeah. uh, one but would you like to say something specifically on that on his question on uh, uh, ventilation service for uh, provided in the car parking lot for control of emissions on the cars etc extractions all, practically all the good uh, car uh, parking ma- manufacturing people in india as yeah. far as i know uh-huh. they give an open system so by the, the uh-huh. sides and the roof uh-huh. it can be covered by the user or by the builder to uh, you know to suit their requirement Mm-hmm. so the side cladding and the top roofing generally are not given they are optional okay. it can be designed whichever way they want yeah there there is one question which is asked uh, which again come to mayuri one of, i think we should give her a prize for the maximum questions to an also to krishnan so she is asking now that between suv and sedan uh, she is given a percentage what normally should be a break up on the size because dimensions required for each of them are different on height width and uh, uh, other parameters What Ma'am, do you think should be a reasonably good one I will, for a big? I will give a straight answer, sir. There are, I mean, uh, uh, from a architect's angle, Bole Sab may may give a different perspective. But the way the industry is growing and based on the projected growth, like I mentioned right at the beginning, even if you have to reach half of China in eight years, it's it's better to design for the higher end because the economy is growing, disposable income is growing. and car manufacturers yeah an aspiration so it's better to go for a bigger size car is is my view so i would yes, say sir. ideally ideally the split should be 40 60 40 for suv 60 yeah. for a sedan that's my view yeah. i would leave it to mr bole i got a yeah. little different take yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the residential building the users are defined yeah. so for every car park there is only one car i said so <laughs> yeah. you can easily bifurcate and you can decide smaller size you can decide exactly. suv and uh, sedan okay yeah. but for commercial you should have the biggest size yeah, you cannot absolutely. you cannot uh, have smaller car parking there then you will have uh, chances of accidents very good uh-huh. perspective sir on residential there, there, there's an interesting I, I, question on that if it's yeah. very high end residential component coming can you get a stack for that one owner with if any problem only he he only is suffering because he has got two cars so let's say and he puts uh, on a stack one would that be because there's nobody else to worry only He or she let worry on that. Am I so right? We are we are doing that a lot. We Why are not? We are doing that. that a lot. Yeah, we can do that. Very good question. Very good question. Not a problem. But of course, that... one question which can be leaved to uh, Vivek on this, uh, which is what can be done by local bodies to make it compulsory, corporation to make it compulsory. Somebody want Delhi schedule of rates, make it compulsory so that government buildings and all those but they start putting that. Do you have any view on that? Is the techno financial issue? See, uh, we all know. Yeah, techno legal issue. Techno legal issue. Sorry. Yeah, I know. See, uh, when it comes to government projects, you know, you don't have these kind of items in DSR. So, uh-huh. uh, the, the one which I showed my my last slide, you know, I yeah. got a lot of problem while convincing the government officials to have a mechanical parking. Okay. And then when the range of mechanical parking is from one point five lakh rupees to eight lakh rupees, it yeah. become further more difficult. Yes. So there cannot be a uh, regulation unless there is some uh, predefined. Maybe, uh, maybe with the, oh, with the assistance from two brilliant thought thought leaders like Balaji and uh, Vivek, <laughs> we can bring a white paper on this subject as part of a focus document as a guideline document. We can make it yeah. available. We'll be most happy to do that. That's what focus does. We can. Happy to. Ravi, I'm sure we can work on it, isn't it? We happy to. Absolutely, collaborate. sir. Yes, yes, most certainly. Yeah. Very good. and of yep. course many people are asked on the car washing i am not even getting it so i let me tell you ladies and gentlemen such a wonderful session uh, the president of a very high quality very high quality i participate in my 56 years of career large number of here are case two brilliant people trying to give a two points of view one from the technology provider and the equipment other one as an architect to do such a presentation very rarely architects get into this particular thing right one and therefore i want to thank vivek uh, for the wonderful presentation giving and what an option you have given uh, uh, balaji sir uh, on all the options and each one of them showing over there is an honor and uh, to all the participants for the wonderful question and look at that even now they are again putting something more by 550 <laughs> i have to put the curtain down because focus has got a meeting starting in another few minutes from now thank you very much thank but you, i sir. can be rest assured uh, anybody having any question which uh, which has come i try to answer put all the thing as a moderator if anything more is that please do write on that 
this presentation will be loaded on our uh, website tomorrow and everybody will have uh, look at that uh, on the YouTube. We based on that your questions on that. We most happy to get back with the reply uh, response uh, appropriately. And I'm sure uh, both uh, uh, Ravi Shankar Danan and uh, uh, Dominic uh, uh, in charge for our events one would be very happy to ensure that response continuous correspondence comes on that. This is not the last point, but we are ended. And let me thank you both for a wonderful. It was a great pleasure. Be before we, you, before we sign up, sir, uh, we would, uh, I'd like to request uh, our uh, treasurer, Mr. Satish Iyengar, to uh, deliver his vote of thanks. Yes. Satish, you gave a good intervention also in with you, by the way. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah, Satish. Thank you, Ravi Shankar, our chair for uh, policy and advocacy. First of all, I'd like to thank our keynote speaker, and I'll speak to him in Marathi, because that is my own dialect. So, Bharat Chand, Sadarikaran, Ani Amamana Purvak Danyavat. It's a very good presentation and heartfelt <laughs> thanks to you. So, and uh, an excellent presentation by him. And the next uh, was from S. Balaji, who being one of the leading manufacturers in India, gave a very good presentation also and giving dwelling into all the latest technology, which was that, of course, our most vibrant uh, president who has put in almost 60 years of service, was a very good moderator, and he tried to cover all the questions as much as possible within the limited time. And, of course, uh, Mr. Dominic, who has been our event and marketing chair, as well as the regional chair, South, who has worked tirelessly along with uh, Narsimhan, our secretary, who is the senior vice president of Prama High Vision, where the surveillance also plays a very, very important role in car parking management system. And they have very special cameras available for such systems because the levels are different. And at each and every level, the cars have to be monitored, being expensive cars. And they do have cameras to look up in all the way directions. So that is another presentation which we can have later on. And our admin, Mamata, who has seen to it that this entire webinar went on very smoothly. So I would request uh, Vivek Bole to, and uh, Balaji also to become members and keep uh, attending our presentations regularly. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank and you. we had a fantastic uh, participation. Uh, uh, physical participation was phenomenally good. I think at one point of time... Uh, we I had reached 127. Oh, correct. We had very, to very, very, uh, very good. Extremely yes, good. And we had a very good participation also. And, and, and uh, thank them all. And, and for yes, all the wonderful thank all of questions. the participants. Yes, and there will really demonstrate what a interest uh, and intent, you know, for the quest of knowledge of all the participants. It is. And uh, um, I mean, uh, do note that uh, we at Focus constantly are striving towards, uh, you know, bringing to you topics for debate and discussion on varied topics and uh, related to, uh, you know, the construction industry. So. We'd encourage you all to become members of Focus. It's just about 2,500 rupees. And stay tuned to all the valuable information we bring through domain specialists for the good of our, uh, you know, our larger community. And uh, log into our website. And uh, this way you can uh, you know, strengthen the construction industry and contribution, uh, contribute to uh, nation building. Do stay safe and healthy. Uh, this is your host, Ravi Shankar Tandavan, signing off. Thank you once again. Good evening to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening Good. to all Thank of you. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Good evening. Thank you, Mamta.